ان الحمد لله الحمد لله الذي خلق بيده البشر وصوره فاحسن صوره ورزقه من الطيبات وفضله على كثير ممن خلق تفضيلا فتبارك الله احسن الخالقين وهو الله لا اله الا هو لم يتخذ ولدا ولم يكن له شريك في الملك ولم يكن له ولي من الذل وكبره تكبيرا الله اكبر له الحمد في الاولى والاخره وله الاسماء الحسنى فادعوه بها هو الرحمن الرحيم الملك القدوس السلام المؤمن المهيمن العزيز الجبار المتكبر سبحان الله عما يشركون وله الحكم واليه ترجعون ونصلي ونسلم على اشرف الانبياء والمرسلين سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم هو خير من صلى وصام وافضل من تهجد لله وقام سيد الاولين والاخرين وخاتم النبيين والمرسلين ورحمه للعالمين بشيرا ونذيرا الرسول المصطفى والنبي المجتبى صلى الله عليه وسلم فاللهم اجزه خير ما جازيت نبيا عن امته ورسولا عن دعوته ورسالته اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على محمد وعلى ال محمد كما صليت وسلمت وباركت على ابراهيم وعلى ال ابراهيم في العالمين انك حميد مجيد اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارham ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الناس اعبدوا ربكم الذي خلقكم والذين من قبلكم لعلكم تتقون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم واخشوا يوما لا يجزي والد عن ولده ولا مولود هو جاز عن والده شيئا ان وعد الله حق فلا تغرنكم الحياه الدنيا ولا يغرنكم بالله الغرور ثم اما بعد dear respected brothers and sisters we human beings are sensitive to certain things those things make us take offense those things sometimes they anger us they annoy us and sometimes they drive us to madness how would you feel dear respected brothers and sisters if someone were to call you right now a terrorist we're desensitized to the word terrorism so it doesn't bother us much anymore we say eh, so what How would you feel if somebody called you insulted your intelligence called you stupid an idiot a dunce a nincompoop if you're a smart person you say eh I'm smart so that does not sticks and stones will break my bones but words will never hurt me but universally most human beings take offense if you insult their parents why is that Many people will tolerate insults. But as soon as you insult a person's parents, they take great offense, ex- especially the mother. So I'll ask again, how would you feel if somebody called you illegitimate? See, that's not an insult towards you, it's an insult to your parents, specifically your mother. If somebody called you in the vernacular a bastard <coughs> you will take such great offense that you might even kill somebody for saying that at least muslims still respect their parents so we take offense to insults to our parents i don't know if non muslims get offended anymore people make a joke calling each other the b word he's an sob it's a common joke <clears throat> it's a joke now it's no longer insulting only probably to muslims Is there something that anybody can say to a human being that will make it 
them feel insulted. So much so that they take great offense, they become enraged to the point of taking immediate action. Is there anything left in human language that we find so offensive? All the racial sensitivities are political correctness issues now. An African-American can call another one the N-word, but if a white person calls them the N-word, they take offense. So it is a contextual offense. Depends who's saying it. It's not a universal offense. Why am I saying this? The reason why I'm saying that, brothers and sisters, is because all the things that we used to find offensive are no longer offensive. But as the seasons change, we're now in winter and the solstice approaches, we are bombarded by a lot of hymns and carols of Christmas and the holidays, decoration, lights and garlands, music all over the place. Everywhere you go, even in the elevator, you hear such music. You're on a hole on a phone, you hear such music. It doesn't matter which, whether it's a restaurant, whether it's a company, you hear this music everywhere. We're saturated. We're inundated. We are immersed in all of this holiday celebrations. At the crux of it is the one thing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala finds the most offensive of anything you can say to Allah. The most offensive thing you can say to Allah of Rahman. The holidays is based on that. Let me tell you how and why. See, dear respected brothers and sisters, not too long ago, decades ago, a century ago, human beings who got offended if they called an illegitimate child because it means that their mother conceived them without being married, right? So it's an insult to the mother and it's very hurtful to a child. Okay. However, human beings, we never stop to think about ourselves when we attribute certain things to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, subhanallah, بَلَّهُ مَا فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ Nay, everything in the heavens and the earth belongs to Allah. بَدِيعُ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ He is the one who originated the universe. He created everything. Therefore, everything is a creation of Allah and everything owes Allah servitude. Everyone and everything is an abd to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. In kullu man fi samawati wal ard illa ati rahmani abda. You and me the heavens and the earth, the sun and the moon, the angels and the jinn. Allah says, you are abd to me. You're slave to me. How would you feel if somebody said, one of your slaves is your son that was conceived and born with one of your slave women, creation, that you never married. There's nowhere in scripture, those who, pro who propose that Allah had a son, there's nowhere in the scripture where it said Allah took a wife. There's nowhere in the scripture. Just that Allah picked a random woman and told her you'll have a son. That's it. But that's not the first time, dear respected brothers and sisters. The Arabs had their own superstitions. And Allah tells that us about that in Quran as well. Look at the powerful statement of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from Surah Al-An'am, ayah number 100 and 101. That people, the Arabs used to associate this type of partnership to Allah. Their superstition was Allah had a jinn for a wife 
and the children they have are the malaika. <laughs> it's preposterous. It makes no logic or no sense. But that was their belief. In fact, they believed that the malaika were females. On top of that, they piled it on. Who, you know, who could make such a nonsensical thing? It makes no sense. Allah took a jinn for a wife, and their children are the Arabs. That was their superstition, their mythology. But they're not the only ones. The Romans had similar, that gods have wives. Zeus, the father of the gods, had wives. But they, the god wives, the goddesses were not enough. He also took a human being to have a son. That happened to be, in one instance, Perseus. For those who watch Clash of the Titans, it is a god who decided to pick a human being, woman, to have a child. And that woman, according to their story, was married to somebody else already. It's just like preposterous. All of these cultures, all of the civilizations that Allah removed, they all said Allah took a human being or some other being to have a child. And Allah explains why that is not possible. So I want to just make us walk through the Quran in a few ayat. Because Allah explains why it's illogical, it is preposterous, and it's greatly insulting. Allah's words. Let's start with Surah Al-Baqarah. Second Surah of the Quran. Surah Al-Baqarah. Ayah number 116. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَقَالُوا اتَّخَذَ اللَّهُ وَلَدَ سُبْحَانَهُ Every time Allah says they, they attribute to me something, he, start, he follows by saying, Subhanah. That this is not befitting for Allah is far removed from that. And so and Allah says, and they said Allah took us a, a child. What that means a child, male or female, doesn't matter. Subhanah. Allah is beyond that. بَلَّهُ مَا فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ Nay, everything belongs to Allah. He doesn't need to take children from what he has created. Allah says, you're all subjects to me. He created this creation. He started, he originated it. And Allah tells us how easy it is to create everything we think is so magnificent that we should not attribute a son to him or a child of any kind. Allah says, when I want anything done, I just say, be and it happens. He's saying, why do I need to take a child if I created all of you by just a word? Kun, that's it. Allah says, I built this universe not by piling on bricks or doing anything with my hands. I just said, kun, and it happened. So Allah says, it's not possible for me to do that because Allah says, it's not befitting for me. Allah has the power to do anything because sometimes people ask you like a riddle. If Allah is so powerful, isn't he powerful enough to have a son if he wants one? Allah says, I don't want one. Surah Al-Baqarah. Al Imran, subhanAllah. This is perfect for the seasons, brothers and sisters. Surah Al Imran, Surah number three, ayah number 45. Maryam alayhi salam gets good news from Malaika. إِذْ قَالَتِ الْمَلَائِكَةُ يَا مَرْيَمْ إِنَّ اللَّهَ يُبَشِّرُكِ بِكَلِمَةٍ مِّنْهُ اسْمُهُ الْمَسِيحُ عِيسَى بُنُ مَرْيَمْ وَجِيهًا فِي الدُّنْيَا وَالْآخِرَةِ وَمِنَ الْمُقَرَّبِينَ Maryam was given a good news that Allah is giving you a child. And in fact, she was told the name of the child. Allah named the child. Maryam did not pick the name Isa, alayhi salam. Allah said that's the name of the child. Allahu Akbar. His name is Muhu Al Masih. His name starts with the title Al Masih. The name Isa and his lineage Ibn Maryam. So in his name, Allah tells what he is, who he is, and where his lineage is. Maryam had a question for the Malak. Qalat Rabbi Anna Yakunu li Walad. وَلَمْ يَمْسَسْنِي بَشَرْ Oh my Lord, how can I have a child when I have no husband? See? Logical question. How can I have a child? I don't have, I'm not married. Remember that. You can't have children unless you're married. Otherwise, you become illegitimate. You know what the Malak said? 
قال كذلك الله يخلق ما يشاء this to you is easy for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this Allah creates whatever he wants إذا قضى أمرا فإنما يقول له كن ما يكون when Allah wants something done he just says be and it happens and how but how did it happen how did Maryam conceive Isa فنفخنا فيها من روحنا Allah just made Malak blow a ruh into her she conceived that's how easy it is in Surah Al-An'am, Allah tells us again, they attribute a child to Allah. And then Allah Subh'ana tells us in Surah to Yunus, ayah number 68, This time Allah says, Subhanahu huwa al-ghani. They said Allah took a, a child. Allah says, I am al-ghani. Having a child means you're needy of something. Brothers and sisters, raise your hand if you want to. Do you have a child? I have seen of children, your hands are not up. <laughs> yeah. The feeling you get when you have a child is a wonderful feeling, right? When you don't have a child, you feel a little bit miserable too. Because the, the relatives are going to say you're cursed or something. You feel miserable either way. You want one, but the relatives make you feel horrible. It's a human need to have children. It's not for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Huwa al-ghani. Allah says, I am not in need of children. I created the heavens and the earth. Why do I need children? See, the same Allah is explaining the logical reason why he doesn't have children. That's Surah to Yunus. Allah did not stop there. Take a look, for example, Surah to Al-Isra. At the end of Surah Al-Isra, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَقُولِ الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ SubhanAllah. Allah is telling the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to say this. وَقُولِ الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ الَّذِي لَمْ يَتَّخِذْ وَلَدًا Say, Alhamdu Lillah, the one who did not take a, 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 any, ch any children. Allah is Alhamd, all of it belongs to Him. Why does He need if He's already praised? By the way, Allah praises himself. <clears throat> Alhamdulillah doesn't mean we, he's great because we're praising him. He's self-praised. Allah says, I don't need children. وَقُلِ الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ الَّذِي لَمْ يَتَّخِذْ وَلَدَى وَلَمْ يَكُلْ لَهُ شَرِيكٌ فِي الْمُلْكِ And no other individual has a partnership with Allah in creation. He has no deputy. He has no assistant. He has no vice. Nothing. وَلَمْ يَكُنْ لَهُ شَرِيكٌ فِي الْمُلْكِ وَلَمْ يَكُنْ لَهُ وَلِيٌّ مِنَ الذُّلْ Why would it would be so low for Allah to have a wali, a supporter, a helper? SubhanAllah. That's what Allah says. My dear respected brothers and sisters, I'm going to skip a surah because I'll mention it inshallah after we take a seat. أَقُلُ قَوْلِ هَذَا وَأَسْتَغْفِرُ اللَّهَ لِي وَلَكُمْ فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم بارك الله لي ولكم في القرآن العظيم ونفعني وإياكم بما فيه من الآيات والذكر الحكيم الحمد لله وحده والصلاة والسلام على من لا نبي بعده سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين ثم أما بعد My dear respected brothers and sisters One of the sunnah that we like to do on the Yom Al-Jum'ah is to recite some verses from specific suwar And one of them is Surah Al-Kahf We like Surah Al-Kahf At least some of us recite the first 10 ayat of it or maybe the last 10 a different riwayat have you ever paid attention to what the beginning of Surah Al-Kahf says? It explains why Allah sent the Prophet Sallallahu and gave him this Qur'an. In the beginning of it, it tells one of the reasons why we have Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as the last and final messenger and why we have Qur'an as the final message. In the beginning of Surah Al-Kahf, you don't have to go far. The third ayah, Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala states, وَيُنذِرَ الَّذِينَ قَالُوا اتَّخَذَ اللَّهُ وَلَدًا This Qur'an, Allah says, أَلْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ الَّذِي أَنزَلَ عَلَىٰ عَبْدِهِ الْكِتَابِ 
وَلَمْ يَجْعَلْ لَهُ عِوَجَا Allah praised himself for sending this book to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He's ala abd. See, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is abd of Allah. We are abd of Allah. Ibadullah. In this book, Allah says there is no crookedness. There's no confusion in it. There's no deviation. Why did Allah make Quran so straight, so solid? Because it's easy to warn people. So, his job was to give glad tidings to the, to the believers. Warn those people that say Allah has taken a child. They have no knowledge of it. If you look to any book that anybody claims Allah has a child, you will find it's based on fiction, it's based on mythology, it is based on superstition. It's not based on revelation. But what is that little word? What do you find insulting? Allah says, كَبُرَتْ كَلِمَةً تَخْرُجُ مِنْ أَفْوَاهِهِمْ إِنْ يَقُولُونَ إِلَّا كَلِبًا Allah says, that is a very grave word that they're saying. It's not something light at all. They only utter lies. This is Surah Al-Kahf, by the way, in the beginning of it. What about Surah Al-Maryam? After Allah mentions Isa, He says, ذَلِكَ عِيسَى بْنُ الْمَرْيَمِ عِيسَى بْنُ الْمَرْيَمِ قَوْلَ الْحَقِّ الَّذِي فِيهِ يَمْتَرُونَ Then he says, مَا كَانَ لِلَّهِ أَنْ يَتَّخِذَ مِنْ وَلَدٍ سُبْحَانَ It is not befitting for Allah to have a child. سُبْحَانَ إِذَا قَضَى أَمْرًا فَإِنَّمَا يَقُولُ لَهُ كُنْ فَيَكُنْ That's in the beginning of Surah Al-Maryam, Ayah 34, 35-36. But in the end of Surah Maryam, this is why it is insulting. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَقَالُوا تَخَذَ الرَّحْمَانُ وَلَدَا لَقَدْ جِئْتُمْ شَيْئًا إِدَّا تَكَادُ السَّمَاوَاتُ يَتَفَطَّرْنَ مِنْهِ وَتَنْشَقُّ الْأَرْضِ وَتَخِرُّ الْجِبَالُ هَدَّا أَنْ دَعَوْ لِلرَّحْمَانِ وَلَدَا وَمَا يَنْبَغِي لِلرَّحْمَانِ أَنْ يَتَّخِذَ وَلَدَا إِن كُلُّ Allah says, they say Allah has taken a child. You have brought forth a, a huge abomination. Something so insulting. Something so heinous. Something so abhorrent. It is such a bad thing to say that Allah says, the heavens want to just obliterate. Imagine if the universe stopped functioning because somebody said it. One person out of the six billion human beings said it. The sun stopped turning. The earth stops. Everything stops. How? What do you think will happen to the universe if that happened? It's as if the heavens want to just obliterate. The earth wants to just split asunder. And every mountain crumbled down to dust. Every time one person says that. That's how heinous it is. That's how insulting it is to Allah. And Allah says, I know everyone who does it. Allah says, I've taken account of all of them. Each one I know. Everyone will come one by one and Allah will ask him about this. This is how serious it is. Subhanallah. If you look through the rest of the Quran, you will find Allah making this case. Surah Al-Furqan. Surah Al-Mu'minun. You know, Allah explains why there cannot be other gods. بَلْ أَتَيْنَاهُمْ بِالْحَقِّ وَإِنَّهُمْ بَلْ أَتَيْنَاهُمْ بِالْحَقِّ Allah says, we've given them the truth, but they're liars. Allah did not take any children, and there are no other gods with him. Why? If there were other gods, Allah explained. Each god will claim what they created. So Allah can say, if there's another god, you cannot enter the universe I created. It's mine. Or they will try to overpower each other. Subhanallah wa ta'ala amma Allah says, there are no gods. It's not possible for there to be gods. There will be no creation left. 
Allah explains logically why there cannot be other gods. So my dear respected brothers and sisters, the Quran has ample explanation. But Suratul Ikhlas simplifies the entire explanation in one ayah. Lam yalid wa lam yulad. Suratul Ikhlas, you know, if I say, have you read Suratul Anam? No. Baqarah? No. Do you remember all this ayah? No. But every child, Muslim, knows Suratul Ikhlas. Walillah alham. And in it says, Lam yalid wa lam yulad. Allah does not beget children, nor was he begotten. If you are born, you cannot be a god, Allah says. Today, people worship one man, Isa ibn Maryam alayhim as salam, as a god. Although the Bible doesn't say he is a god. The Bible doesn't say so, at least in the canonical gospels. Isa never claimed to be a god, nowhere in the gospel. Someone else, Paul says Isa is God. Why? I don't know. Subhanallah. But let me tell you, brothers and sisters, in conclusion, why it's important for us to be vigilant about this. Um, this is something I experienced myself. You know, our children in school, they hear about Christmas pageant, and some schools allow them to participate in Christmas pageants. Please do not make your kids participate. Send them to school and say, my child should not participate in the Christmas program. Why? I used to participate in Christmas program. I was the lead actor in the Christmas program when I was in elementary school. I still remember those carols till today. Burn seared into my memory. May Allah save me from it. Look, Allah guided me from that. I'm just trying to tell you, it is poisonous. It's bad enough to hear it on TV. Brothers and sisters, turn down the TV a little bit. The more TV you watch in the, in the winter, the more Christmas carols they're going to get. I kid you not. Please do not take your children to sit on the lap of Santa Claus. He's another mythical creature. Do you want to know why Santa Claus wears red? Because the Coca-Cola company made a poster with Santa Claus drinking Coke and he wore red. And now Santa Claus wears red. And everybody thinks Santa Claus wears red. Where did Santa Claus come from? This is another Dutch type of thing. St. Nicholas. Where did these Christmas trees come from? The ones that you see today, they came from Germany. But it's based on a pagan celebration. Everything about Christmas is based on a pagan celebration. The 25th of December being Christmas, everybody knows, every learned Christian knows, Isa wasn't born on the 25th of December, but that was when they celebrated Saturnalia. Saturn, the god of agriculture for the Romans. In the winter, because everything dies, celebration for the god of agriculture. When the sun goes away, Sol Invictus. Many, many um, cultures believe that the sun was a god. So in the winter, God becomes sick. That's why you don't see sunlight. Then God recovers after a few days. Winter solstice, next Friday, the 21st of December for 2018. Some people's god is going to get sick. The Egyptians worshipped Ra, another god that got sick. It's based on just pure mythology, subhanAllah. The reason why it's poisonous, us, brothers and sisters, a lot of Muslims know nothing about Christmas and its history. It is so bad, and I'll give you now my experience. This is so bad. On the day of Jumu'ah, one day, the best day of Jumu'ah I think I, ever had, I would have had in my life. I was in a place you can never believe. It was like 10.30 a.m. I said, I'm going to go to Jumu'ah at 10.30 a.m. You probably wonder, nobody goes to Juma at 10.30 a.m. It hasn't even started yet. It starts by me about noon. I know. I wanted to be so early that I'll be so close. So I went. Because it takes a long time to get there. You'll know where I was. When I got there, there was nowhere to sit but close. When I sat, the sun was right above. And I was perspiring profusely. I was sweating like I was in a pool. I was like, Alhamdulillah, I am going to sweat till I catch this Juma. This is probably the best Juma in my life. While we're waiting for the Imam, somebody's telephone ring, and the ringtone was jingle bell, jingle bell. I was sitting literally a stone's throw in front of Al Kaaba. That's the ringtone of a Muslim. I wanted to sit very close to the, you know, the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And a Muslim's ringtone is jingle bell. 
They think it's a cool ringtone without knowing any. Can you imagine in Masjid Al Haram, now we hear jingle bells? And not know exactly what that means. Please, brothers and sisters, I urge you to have nothing to do with this for one reason. Because it is the epitome of shirk to say Allah has a son. Why is it insulting? The son has a mother, right? But the mother has no husband and Allah never married this woman. It's like we're saying Allah has an illegitimate child. This is how insulting it is. If you don't believe me, believe a jinn. You know what the jinn said? وَأَنَّهُ تَعَالَى جَدُّ رَبِّنَا لَمْ يَتَّخِذْ صَاحِبَةً وَلَا Jinn even say, it's not befitting for the majesty of Allah to take a, a spouse or a child. We find it offensive to say I have an illegitimate child, but we find it okay to say Allah has an illegitimate child. That's how sick it is. Please, if anybody say Merry Christmas, you say, I am not Christian and I don't celebrate Christmas. Be clear about that. Don't be nice and ashamed and trying to blend in and say Merry Christmas too or same to you. No, no. Merry Christmas, I don't celebrate Christmas. Yes, because you don't, it's your faith. If you participate in shirk, Allah says, I will wipe out all your deeds. That is why shirk is the only in unforgivable sin. Allah says, I can forgive anything except shirk. Shirk, imagine all the salah, all the zakah, all the siyam you've done till the point of you committing that shirk. Allah tells the malaika, wipe it out. This person has zero. That is why we should not partake. And that is why Tawheed comes from the Quran. It wasn't made up later. Inna Allah wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala nabi. Ya ayya alladhina amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima. Allahumma salli wa sallim wa barik ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad. Kama sallayta wa sallamta wa barakta ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim. Innaka hamidun majid. Allahumma hdina fi man hadayt. وعافنا فيما نعفيت وتولنا فيما توليت وبارك لنا فيما أعطيت وقنا شر ما قضيت فإنك تقضي بالحق ولا يطع عليك اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين وانصر الإسلام والمسلمين واغفر لجميع موت المسلمين يا عزيز يا كريم اللهم جعلنا من الموحدين اللهم جعلنا من الموحدين اللهم جعلنا من الموحدين واكتب على قلوبنا كلمة لا إله إلا الله اللهم أمتنا على هذه الكلمة وبعثنا على هذه الكلمة يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم جعلنا من الذين يدخلون الجنة في الدوس الأعلى من مع النبيين والصديقين والشهداء والصالحين وحسن أولئك رفيقا اللهم إنا نعوذك من الكفر والشرك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم أجنا من النار وأدخلنا الجنة مع الأبرار ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار صلى اللهم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وأقيم الصلاة. الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله.